Academy FM Folkestone. 105.9 FM. And online at academyfmfolkestone.com. For those of you listening, um, that we're also listening to the news just before this and on Friday as well, you'll be aware of some pretty exciting news um, for people in education or their parents in Folkestone, which is um, the Folkestone Academy 6 form moving into the glasswork sites from September. That site being vacated by University Centre Folkestone. Um, the location, for those of you that don't know, most people do, I know, but the location is just off Tonsine Street um, near the Quarter House Theatre. Now, to talk about this this morning um, i'm joined by uh, sean heslop the principal of the folkestone academy and also alistair upton the chief executive of the creative foundation good morning good morning morning now alistair people um a lot of people don't really know that ucf were going to be moving out has this been planned for a long time um c- could i just say um one of the reasons you've asked me is that we're the landlord of that building and so i think that's uh, important that's our relationship mm. with with the glass work yeah we've been working on <coughs> Excuse me. We've been working on this for over a year, um, year and a bit. The University um, Canterbury Christchurch did a review. They 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 run the space. Um, they did a review a uh, year and a bit ago, and so it's been on the cards all that time. The universities, if people don't know, are going through lots of changes, as are so many other things, and reviewed their finances um, in particular. And they uh, they decided that uh, it wasn't something that was working for them financially. And so they moved out, and we've been uh, talking to a number of people about moving in ever since. Okay. Now, Sean, um, with the Academy, up up here you've got um, a, a massive and fairly new building. Why do you need another space? Very good question. It might strike some as a bit odd that this new £40 million building that's just in its sixth year um, needs more space. It, it's two factors, really. One is that we have been hugely successful in terms of our student numbers. We've been oversubscribed every year since 2008 and in the sixth form as well, and that, that continues. That's obviously a, a, a wonderful uh, comment on the offer that we have here and the quality of the education. But the second one is one of timing. If the Glassworks building had not become available, then we'd have stayed on the site um, here at at, at the main building. Um, It would have been a bit more cramped, but we'd have coped. But it was that timing of this building becoming available, and then that gave us the opportunity to do something really... I think, exciting and innovative with education, not just for our young people, but for Folkestone as well. Tell us about the types of courses that you'll be running down there. It will be all of our, what we call Level 3 courses. That will effectively be all of the A-level courses, all of the um, the BTEC Level 3 courses, so everything from um, the, the traditional academic subjects, English, maths, history, the sciences, as well as arts, graphics. We'll also be um, combining our courses such as um, PE and sport. Uh, the outside work on those will be will be delivered here at the academy. The theory will be delivered in the classroom. And then, we'll, yeah, the, the full range of courses that we currently offer will be offered down there at the Glassworks. Okay, so there'll be a fair amount of young people moving down there to study from September. Yeah, from from September there'll be over three hundred, probably near to three hundred and fifty. Okay, so that's that's quite a lot of a lot of people going into the area. Now I know UCF were, were there already. Um, Alistair, your uh, landlord, the Creative Foundation, is uh, landlords of the Glasswork site and of course the Quarter House Theatre next door and many other properties in that that area mm-hmm. in in the in the Creative Quarter. What benefits do you think that this six form centre and all the young people going there will have for the area? Um, I'm, 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 we're incredibly excited about the, the partnership that we're setting up with the Academy and, and I see it as one of huge potential for the area and for us. And I don't think yet we know exactly how it's going to transpire. And I think that's a great thing. I mean, we had... I was at a session planning the next book festival and we had one of the Academy students in there. And just the energy I got off, this young person came in, young girl, she was so excited. She read lots of books, she had ideas. And I sat in a room with her and we came away energised by that. And so I think it would be wrong to say this is how it's going to be when the Academy turns up. I think we've got lots of things we can do with people there. We've got the theatre at the Quarter House. How's that going to work? How are we going to 
use it? What are we going to do there? So will students, sorry to interrupt, will students be able to actually use the Quarter House Theatre for their drama studies and so on? We're going to, we, we have to do the negotiations about how that's going to work, but certainly in our mm. conversations, um, Sean and I, we've always thought that there's a really exciting space and we want to work with them. And we're already working um, just in a tentative step on the book festival with a with a programme that we'd work with mm. students, which would mm. then appear on the stage at the Quarter House. Um, we've got the triennial, how will the artists um, attach to the to the academy? Is there something we can do there? So I see huge potential mm. um, uh, in terms of the relationship, and I think as we do that, that will um, make the whole area around there feel slightly different, which I'm very excited about, seeing people there, animating it, and um, and then we can see how it goes, really driven by the academy and the young people and ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, Alistair, it's, it's fairly well known that the Academy and the Creative Foundation have got several links, primarily um, Roger DeHaan, of course. Um, for the, the process through which all this happened, did other educational institutions have a chance to bid for this space in the Glassworks? Yeah, we've been um, as open as um, reasonably open, I think, about the fact that we've been looking for somebody new. Um, it wasn't uh, entirely clear when uh, the university would move out and how that would go. Um, we had long, long conversations with another educational establishment way before we spoke to the academy. And when right. it came down to it, in the end, there was two uh, bidders for the glassworks, of which one was the academy and one was an educational establishment that's, that, that um, isn't in town in the moment and um so yes it was open i think people we, we wanted to keep education there if we could so i think in the world of education people knew that space was available the politicians knew other people knew and mm -hmm. so um and we kept a very clean process of removing the joint parties from both sides uh weren't involved in the negotiations or discussions and um the academy won i mean that's how it worked we thought it was the best bid and we went with it mm. Okay, so Sean, you, you won the bid, you're expanding your sixth form teaching, moving into a new site. Um, do you think this is going to be at the disadvantage, though, of other educational providers like K College, other local secondary schools? I, I really don't think so. Um, firstly, what I'd say is, it really is relocating our sixth form. So the course offer we have here at the main academy is going to be relocated at the Glassworks. Um, if you look at uh, the, the, the local K College, the, their course offer, which tends to be um, mainly vocational, uh, they, they offer a range of courses which we we do not and, and, and we don't intend to. It's a very specialist area of that, that kind of vocational offer. So I think the two can, can live together quite happily. In in terms of the impact on other school providers at post-16, similarly, um, I, I think it, it will have, it, if anything, it will have a positive impact. I mean, you know, one interesting fact is that every day, 1,000, uh, nearly 1,000 secondary school students leave the Shepway area for their education from 11 to 18. Uh, they go east, they go north, they go west um, to, to, to Ashford, to Canterbury and to Dover. And I think, you know, there's a, there's a huge potential to attract some of those mm. students mm. back into Folkestone. Can I just ask for a yeah. second, um, why are some young people leaving the area? Is it because they're going to grammar schools maybe in, in Dover or, or, or is, uh, are we just not teaching... Um, a wide variety of courses in this area. Why are they going? It, it, it's a very interesting question. Um, there are some who go to, to, to the grammar schools, some who go to the faith schools, um, but a number also go to the other high schools. And... It, I think the answer that no, no one quite knows that answer uh, to, to that question at the moment. Um, perhaps it is course offer. Perhaps it is um, uh, um, proximity in terms of close to some some uh, uh, road links. I'm thinking of the the community, particularly up in Hawkinge. But also, um, I think. This is, and I think this is the exciting thing about the Glassworks. Perhaps, you know, since the Academy opened in 2007, the one thing we've done is, is be innovative, take risks and shake things up. Um, we're doing this again at Post 16. And I think the real attraction of having this bespoke building for sixth form study, that preparation of that stage before university or employment, is hugely exciting. And, and I'd love to attract some of those 16-year-olds you know, who, are, who are finding their Post 16 education elsewhere to attract them back into the town um, and, and, and keep them in Folkestone. Mm.
Looking at some of the contacts um, that we've had from parents uh, on Friday and over the weekend about this, um, they were mostly, in fact, I think they were all very positive about this. One of the questions that was raised um, was the time scale. Now, now, in terms of doing building works and modifying a building for your use, it's not actually that long till you have to start teaching there in September. Can you get all the work done? Of course. Um, we've given ourselves a, a three-week window. I, I, I would say that th there, there isn't that much building work needs to be done because, of course, it has been used for an educational reason for the last four years. Um, there are some conversions. Let me give you an example. Uh, there is no science teaching provision down at the current Glassworks site. We're creating two science labs. But, it's, um, but that in itself, other than putting on the gas and the water and, and, and creating the partitions, is the nature of the conversion. So it's pretty straight forward and yet we're um we're, we're currently working with um, canterbury christchurch university and of course with the creative foundation in terms of our schedule program over the next three or four weeks to um to make sure the building's ready for september this year mm. What's the reaction been from students and parents, Sean? Well, we had a series of um, information sessions which were held earlier in uh, March and v very positive. Um, lots of people look at the this as something exciting, is that great step between school and university or employment and so on. And, I mean, understandably as well, there have been, well, I'd say people just raising some questions, you know, which you'll always get when you bring in change, such as, you know... Um, transporting some students from the main academy building down to the glassworks and vice versa um some questions about uh, security but again all these sorts of things are absolutely right to ask um but yeah but by and large the the the, the uh, reaction has been overwhelmingly positive you're gonna have run buses aren't you yes that's design. right um okay. the way we're working out the timetable is there's not going to be huge transport from one site to another during the day um but when that is the case um obviously the the, the shuttle bus will leave in the morning and then come back in the afternoon Afternoon. And finally, Alistair, you're going to have a load of uh, young people in your midst from now on. Are you excited about it? Um, absolutely thrilled about it. Um, we've uh, been looking at how we run the quarter house uh, in the future and we've come up with a new plan. Even before this was signed, we wanted that to be about young people using the space and, and building a programme from them, uh, starting from preschool actually, families, but running up to around about age 20, 21, 22. So we know how important that generation of people is for Folkestone and we're thrilled to be working with them. We're looking forward to it. It's exciting. I've no idea how it's going to work. That's the nature of working with um, with young people, and and uh, I'm sure I, my seat is going to become very uncomfortable from time to time. And I'm looking forward to that. We're shaking up our organisation, and thank you for doing that, Sean. Pleasure. Okay, thank you both coming in. That's Alice Drupton, the chief executive of the Creative Foundation, and Sean Heslock, the principal of the Folkestone Academy. If anybody listening um, has any opinions on the Six Form Centre moving down to the Glassworks, do let us know. You can ring or text on 01303 721059 or get on our Facebook. 105.9 Academy FM. The sound of Folkestone.